All right, in this podcast, I'm going to do a couple um, covalent Lewis dot structures. All right, so first we're just going to talk a little bit. When you're looking at uh, Lewis dot structures, you need to, sorry, got to get my pen working, had to move the screen real quick. All right, um, when you're looking at Lewis dot structures, the first thing you need to think about is the center. You need to get the center figured out, okay? Um, carbon is always a huge, uh, good likelihood for the center because carbon has four valence electrons and when you give each side one before you give any a pair you see that he has four available sites for bonding. Hydrogen can never be the central because it only has one available spot for bonding. Okay, so that's one thing to look at. Here the way the structure is broken up also gives you another hint telling you that you have carbon as a central that gets three hydrogens and then another carbon central that gets two oxygens. Okay, so let's go ahead and set it up like that. So you have four valence electrons on carbon. All right, and then you have three hydrogens coming off, each with, each with one valence electron. All right, and then you have a second central, C. It's going to, again, have four valence electrons. And then it has two O's. Okay, now you could put the O's in strings like this, but that would give you three centrals. You want the least amount of central atoms as possible. Okay, so we're just going to attach both oxygen to the C and see how that method works out for us. All right, now each oxygen has six. All right, now let's go ahead and give each of these a single bond. Okay, so single bond, single bond, single bond, single bond. Most people forget this one. You must connect your two central atoms. All right, now we're going to single bond each oxygen. Okay, when we do that, we see that this carbon has 2, 4, 6, 8. It's good. Hydrogen has 2, each of them, so it's good. This carbon has 2, 4, 6, 7, so they need to do something there. And then each oxygen has 2, 4, 6, 7. We only have one extra electron that we can use here, so we know we're going to have to do a little something extra. Okay? So let's go ahead and see if we can't double bond this oxygen. Okay, now this oxygen has 2, 4, 6, 8. This one has 2, 4, 6, 8. All right, and then we can add our one extra lone electron right there to that one. If you were to redraw this, cleaned up a little bit, so we're just going to straighten out all of our lines, especially those uh, that double bond over there. So you have a single bond to each hydrogen, single bond from the carbon to the carbon. Now you have a double bond right here on that oxygen and you have a single bond on this one. Okay, so that'd be how you do that structure. Okay, let's look at a different one. How about HCN? All right, first we know that typically the central atom is the first atom, but we just talked about how hydrogen can never be the central atom because he can only bond one time. So hydrogen's always on the end. So let's talk about which one would be the next most likely candidate to be the central atom. Well here you have one, two, three available spots for bonding and on carbon you have four. So carbon is a better choice for the central atom here. So add your valence electrons going around. All right, now everybody single bonds first. Okay, so single bond, single bond. Okay, now hydrogen has two. He's good. Carbon has two, four, six. Not so good. Nitrogen has two, four, six. So we still need to do some more things. So let's go ahead and double bond, see what happens. Now carbon has two, four, six, seven. Nitrogen has two, four, six, seven. Okay, and if we go ahead and bond these very last ones, now nitrogen has two, four, six, eight. Carbon has two, four, six, eight. So it's all together. Okay, and then if you redraw it so that it's pretty, you have a triple bond right there in the middle, and there you go. Alrighty, next molecule is C2O4 two minus. The two minus means we get to add two extra electrons this time. All right, so let's think. Remember how we talked about carbon's usually the central atom? So how many do you think you'll have here? You said two, you're right. So you're gonna have carbon as your central on each side. And carbon has four valence electrons. Okay, now 
there are four oxygens, two carbons. So if um, you're thinking that it would be symmetrical, you're right. If molecules can be, they will be symmetrical, okay? So that means you should give two to each. Oxygen has six valence electrons. So we're going to give each of our oxygens six valence electrons. Okay. All right, now we're going to start bonding. So give everybody a single bond first. Okay, so we've got single bond, single bond, single bond, single bond, single bond. Okay, carbon each has two, four, six, seven. Oxygens each have two, four, uh, six, seven. So everybody has seven, and we have six molecules here. We know two extra electrons is not going to be enough to satisfy them. So we need to start double bonding. So let's double bond two of the oxygens to the carbon. Okay, so on this carbon we have two, four, six, eight. That's good. Oxygen, two, four, six, eight. This oxygen the same, and this carbon the same. And these bottom two, two, four, six, seven. So that's where our two extra electrons get to go. Okay, now everybody has eight, everybody's happy. If you were to re redraw the structure more pretty, it should look like this. All right, there you go. So you got your two double bonds and then you got three single bonds. All right, next structure is CH3OH. Okay. Again, giving you a hint by the break in the formula. So you're going to have a carbon and an oxygen as your central. Carbon has four valence electrons. And this one's going to have three hydrogens coming off as indicated by the formula. And you have O, which has six valence electrons. All right, and then you have the one hydrogen left. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and make some single bonds. All right, so each hydrogen is satisfied. This carbon is satisfied. Oxygen, two, four, six, eight, and hydrogen, two. So everybody in that picture is satisfied with single bonds. So you have five single bonds there. All right, and last structure, you have S. S has six valence electrons. He is going to be the central atom. And you're going to have three oxygens coming off here. Oxygen has six valence electrons. All right, last oxygen. All right, now single bond everyone first. All right, there's our single bonds. Okay, now each oxygen only has two, four, six, seven. Sulfur already looks like he's already exceeded the octet, which he's in the third row and down, so he can do that. So we're going to have to double bond, okay? And then we have two extra electrons left over, okay? Oxygen's two, four, six, eight, each of them. Sulfur has two, four, six, eight, ten, but it's okay because he can violate the octet. If you were to redraw this, it would look like such. All right, and there you go. One double bond, two single bonds, and that's all you got to do.